Hi everyone, uh, today I thought I'd do a sheep painting for you. I'm going to do a slightly surreal impressionist style against a dramatically coloured sky. And you can see I've got a failed attempt at the initial drawing there, so I just turned the paper upside down and just starting again. So this is uh, A2 mixed media paper and I'm using a watercolour marker. Uh, this is Prussian blue, I think, but uh, and for this stage, I'm not too fussy about the blue as long as it's a fairly deep blue. So initially I'm just ignoring any sort of fluffy bits or textural marks and just trying to get the, uh, the structure of the animal reasonably correct. So I'm just going to go back round and check my drawing because for some reason I'm having a little bit more difficulty than normal citing what's going on. It's not too far out. That, that, that bit's not too far out anyway. Um, let's see what we got. So that should come up there more. Back of the neck's a little higher. Not too bad, and then the leg comes down to that there. So, and the right front leg is directly under this dip, pretty much. So, And then that leg's hidden a little bit more and I had it by the fleece and the belly drops down a little bit more there. Put the rear leg coming down to around about there. And then the other rear leg I don't know if it's me, but this, this particular sheep seems to have you know, very thin legs compared to normal, but maybe that's me. Um, okay, so we've got that first animal in place, and then I quite like the way the lamb is peeking out from behind the adult. So the top of the head's actually up there, isn't it? It's a bit higher. So the ear needs to be about there, so that mark needs to go. Oh, I might better hide that in a minute. Uh, and then the 
the rest of the legs are sort of lost mostly in shadow. So we'll actually mark in the edge of the cast shadow as well. And then we've got our sheep and lamb outline in place. And then I thought I'd add a third one over to the right. Um, so let's say that I'm going to put the horizon line quite low in this painting because uh, I want most of the most of the picture to be sky. So um, off in the distance a little bit and sort of just over the horizon. We can have another animal here. And again, without being tempted to get into any detail just yet. Put in the line of the back. And in terms of placing the animals, that's all I need to do for the moment. So for the next stage, I've loaded up my palette with conventional acrylic. So I've got titanium white, fluorescent orange, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent blue, process magenta, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. I've got a decorator's brush here. I guess it's about an inch and a half, two inches wide, something like that. Quite frayed. Oh, it's a one, it's a one inch brush, actually. Um, it's quite frayed. And I'm just going to begin by spraying the surface of my paper with water and that's going to cause the watercolour marker to bleed and run somewhat but um, you know that could be to my advantage for what I have in mind so the plan is to put in a dramatically colourful and cloudy sky and I hope to mimic the textures that I end up creating in the sky in the fleece of the animals so to begin with oh, now I want these animals to stand out you know, fairly pro prominently against the sky. So with that in mind, I'm going to pick up mostly white, uh, a little bit of the fluorescent blue, and I'm just going to grab a corner of that uh, cerulean blue there on the brush, and I'm just going to spray the palette with water as well. Um, and I'll actually I'll just spray, spray my brush with a touch of water. And what I'm going to do to begin with is just uh, drag. Now I'm, I'm hesitating here because the watercolour marker spray sprayed with water has created some lovely textures and things. So I'm actually going to, my original plan was to sweep this brush that I've loaded across the bottom here. But I'm actually going to hold fire on doing that and come up a little bit higher. So because I had the cerulean blue on one corner of the brush, that's allowed me to create some sort of automatic texture and mixing on the brush. So let's, there's my cerulean corner. So if I go to the other side and pick up some of the titanium white again, uh, I'm going to do a similar treatment going from right to left. I'm letting that peter out as I approach the animal because again I like the textures in particular there. And then we'll do that technique one more time uh, but this time what I'm going to do is just grab titanium white on the on the white end of the brush and we'll pick up a little bit of that uh, process magenta on the other end.
And that's just begun to introduce a little bit of a change in colour there. Now for the upper part of the painting, I want to go gradually darker. So let's grab a bit more of the cer cerulean blue. And we'll mix that in. Um, and let's just change the, the way we're applying the paint. Kind of push against the bristles down into that wet horizontal band. Pick up a little bit of the ultramarine blue so we change the colour. Oh, that, now that, worked, that bit worked quite well. I quite like that effect. So just pushing the, the bristles in a little bit harder. Touch darker, a bit more ultramarine. I nearly dropped the brush then. That could have been, <laughs> that could have been disastrous. Uh, but we got away with it. Okay, so just going around my drawing a little bit carefully there. Let's go a little darker again, so a bit more of the ultramarine, a bit more of the process magenta. And I'll grab a, just a touch of white on the corner this time. And this time we'll roll the brush rather than push it. So again, a bit more of the blue, a bit more of the magenta, and this time I'm just going to grab a corner of the orange. And I quite like the, the effects I'm getting there in the sky. Uh, but it's becoming a, perhaps a little bit too repetitive. So um, let's perhaps go darker again. So more of the ultramarine blue. But let's mix that in with some of the fluorescent blue just to change the colour a bit. Some of the magenta. And again, I'm going to pick up, this time we're going to try picking up some white on one corner and then the other corner. So we've got a, oh, if I can actually grab some, <laughs> we've got a, two corners of white here. And uh, let's put some of that darker colour into the right hand top corner. Just move the brush around and tap it down in various orientations. And then having blocked in that area, I want to give these animals a, uh, a bit of land to stand on. So I'm just grabbing some yellow, fluorescent yellow and mixing that into what I've already got and we'll use that to if I sweep up so again I'm trying to keep the character of the brush strokes that I use I want them to be fairly consistent throughout the whole painting it's a little trickier to push against the bristles down at the because I've got this uh, sh little shelf on the obviously the, the board I'm painting on um, is supported on the little shelf of my easel. So consequently, um, that's kind of stopping me from pushing the bristles up in quite the way I would normally on, or on other parts of the paper. But nevertheless, I can do what I can to apply those upward strokes where I can. 
we're angled strokes over to the right that's working quite nicely a bit more yellow into the mixture and a touch of white and I, I really like that texture from the watercolor marker so I'm going to leave that visible and I've got my cast shadows in here but I'm going to, going to need a smaller brush for those so quite quickly been able to establish a dramatically colored sky and the beginnings of some land all right well obviously the paint is still very wet uh, at the moment I'm feeling uh, really quite happy with the lower part of the sky I like the left hand side I'm less happy with the top right so I may come in and add some more clouds on top of that area we'll, we'll see how it goes um, now I want to start on the animals next the way the watercolor markers bled into the face of this animal this sheep at the moment I like that a lot um, so I'm going to try and preserve some of that if I can uh, similarly where the light is catching on the top of the the lamb I, I think when I add shadow you know that can be uh, preserved as well and then possibly some of this texture on the back as well we'll see you know we'll see how that goes but what, what I want to do now is switch to these uh, smaller flat brushes and we'll stick with the same paint same type of paint um, and we'll just start to add you know what I can with uh, the colors I've got to to the sheep so um, first thing I want to do then is get some warmer colors in here on the fleece so I'm going to grab some of the fluorescent orange and I've run out of yellow so for the moment I'm just going to grab some some white and we'll perhaps pick up a little bit of the magenta in there and again I'll I'll get a, just a corner of that deeper colour on my brush and I'm going to spray the little bit of water into the palette on that patch of colour and uh, let's see if we can add some interesting texture down the front of this animal by mimicking some of the brush strokes that I used earlier. Just getting a little bit more of that sort of deep purple into the mix as I come down to the lower part or the underside of the sheep. If I go back in more, yeah, and darken that colour again. I think I can use that purple for some of the shadow on the legs. Now I'm cheating a bit here because the shadow goes up to the top of the leg, but at the moment I quite like the way that brush stroke is kind of going across the leg um, sort of frayed edge so I'm, I'm leaving leaving out the shadow up there do something similar at the top of that one and I'm being careful to preserve the watercolor marker that's bled because I like the way that looks And a little bit of that shadow colour to the tail there and then now the shadow on the lamb is is quite a lot darker but I'm actually just looking to see I think I can let's get a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue into this same mixture put 
put a bit of shadow on the ear there and indicate the top of the other ear and then I'm just I'm just wondering how much the, the sheep in the reference has got quite a few dark patches on its face and I'm wondering whether to include those or not so I'm going to hold fire on that and come down to the lamb so the face is very dark then the ear is casting, gotta be quite careful doing this, a line of shadow onto the body there. Now I've put that in slightly the right place but in terms of conveying the idea of a cast shadow that should be okay. And although it's going to be pretty much silhouette I'm notice I'm curving my brush strokes around here just to get a little bit of texture and form into proceedings. And then For the more distant sheep, it's, you know, it's not, fair, not very far away, but just a little bit further back. So I'm not worried about changing the tone. So I can use that same shadow colour to add. some darker areas and there's a cast shadow from the head onto the front of the chest. And then same brush let's pick up uh, what we've got left of the ultramarine blue, mix that in with some of the orange and some of the magenta. Put more blue there. And let's see how this works as a deeper shadow colour on the lamb. So we've got shadows within shadows here. So the legs are very dark. And then let's see if we can use that same colour. Obviously we can use that same colour for the, for the cast shadow. I guess what I mean is, let's see how well that works. And the answer is, not that well if you accidentally go over the leg. Um, but we'll fix that in a bit. Well, the top of the painting is still very wet so I can't really do much with that uh, for the moment so let me come back in I've picked up the uh, the shadow color again but with a bit more of the blue and the magenta in switch to a small round brush now so the sheep has got a nostril there and Obviously we need a mouth as well. I'll enhance the 
shadow under the jaw while making a bit of an adjustment to the shape of the jawline. Just working out exactly where to put the eye. The eye's very much in shadow, so I'm taking, well, as you probably noticed, I'm taking quite a lot of artistic license in this painting. And then we can use this same colour to just do a little bit more drawing to tidy up the shape of the ear a little bit. But I'm deliberately putting a broken line around that patch of shadow because I quite like, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on camera, but there's a little frayed edge where I came in from the sky before and that works quite well with the shape of the ear. So, you know, no point in um, overpainting something which is already working. And then we can add some other little elements of drawing to, to the sheet using the shadow colour. And I think I've pretty much decided now to to leave the face of the sheep as it is. I like the texture from the, the watercolour marker. So put in a few squiggly lines. Darken the knees and some of the parts of the upper leg. And then I feel the need to uh, just make the line of the lower leg a little clearer. I think that's, that's all I want to do on that animal for the moment. I'm going to leave the lamb for the moment as well. But uh, for the third one over on the right, again, we can just 
come back in and do a little bit of drawing to refine things a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go into detail with the eyes on this animal, but I can put in a couple of patches of shadow to show that it does have eyes. And then if I change my mind in a moment, I've done some of the work already. Definitely need a nose though. Now in the reference, the, uh, the animal's got a lovely expression. It's got its jaw partly open, but I don't want to get into all that. Um, uh, I want to keep that animal quite simple is what I'm saying, because that, that one's off in the distance. Now, pure titanium white on the brush. And put this on to both tidy up the drawing where it's become a bit confused, where the watercolor marker bled into the sky. And of course, also to add some highlights to to the animal. So when I'm painting in this style, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference and there are often, you know, a multitude of highlights because obviously the surface of uh, an animal like a sheep, it's got quite a lot of subtle bends and bumps and um, recesses and things. So I'm looking at those to inform what I'm doing, but then I'm ignoring most of them and I'm just picking out the ones that I think will help my painting. In you know, certainly when I'm using, when I'm painting in this style, where, you know, it's, it's very much uh, expressive and impressionist and somewhat surreal, you know, so this, nobody's going to mistake this painting for a photograph of a sheep, but hopefully they'll be able to see, you know, sheepish elements within it. So again, I don't want to overdo the painting because of what the watercolour marker has already given me. I can put a few little highlights on top of that orange and then similarly on the, along the back of the neck. And then the, the lamb, I want to just clarify what's going on in terms of the line of its back, which is there. Brighten this little area up a little bit so that it stands out from the sky a bit. And if we go over to the third animal on the right, we can do something similar. But without going too wild, a little bit of light on top of the nose, a little bit of light, or well, not so much light, but make the top of the head white. So again, it just stands out from the background a bit. Better. Now, I don't mind that the body is more or less merged into the background. Not so happy about that mark. Um, let's see if we can use this white to just disguise that a little bit. Now, there are just a couple of things I want to adjust um, on this main pair here. The first is this ear from the lamb is kind of overlapping the, the fluff on the chest of the, uh, the main sheep. Oh, and by the way, I, I did add a bit of uh, darkened orange with the magenta to the eye there off camera. Um, but what I'm using at the moment is, is the orange straight out of the tube um, and then with a bit of the white in to just hide the, uh, the that lamb's ear behind the chest of the adult.
uh, and I'm just going to add a few, a quite likely effect of just tapping the frayed brushes, frayed bristles down onto the sheep. So we'll give, we'll give the sheep a little bit more orange, I think. I quite like that. And it, obviously it pops against the blue. Uh, but we, won't, we won't go too wild. And then the next thing is I just want to darken the shadow on this leg here. So I've just gone back to the, it's just the left hand edge of this leg. I just want to go back to the darker purple. It's a bit more blue in it this time, I think. Um, and I'm going to join that up to the cast shadow I've got here. And while I've got that on the brush, I'm just going to add uh, a few sort of blades of grass coming out of the top of that cast shadow. Let's put a couple over there as well. And then there's a bit of pale green on my palette from earlier where I kind of mixed in the fluorescent yellow with some of the blues I had. It's kind of this green that's sort of showing through a little bit. Um, so we'll put just, a, you know, again, not going too mad with this, but just a few little highlights. And I'm mixing that in with some of the titanium white uh, right now, or just, or I just did. And so Just to put a few little highlights in the grass. Perhaps there are a few flowers or something. And then in terms of the sky, as mentioned, I like this patterning and the brush marks I've got here. And even this I don't mind, and this. It's this bit here, this top right corner that I don't like much. So what I'm thinking at the moment is if I keep most of this and just crop the painting on the right hand edge, that would remove that vertical run that I've got. It'll push this animal off towards the right hand edge as if he's just sort of or she's just wandered into the picture. And then if I come up here, that will remove nearly all of that bit. And I think that will work rather better. 